Hello and welcome to another Getting Projects Done with me, Chris. Uh, this week I am going to depart from working on my Gundam as uh, there is a bunch of sanding to be done and I really didn't feel like going through another two hours of, you know, sanding. I mean, if that's what you guys really want to watch, I mean, you know, there wasn't really a whole lot that was changed uh, since the last episode. I just was busy with other crap and getting other things filmed and as you'd imagine so i was like i was actually in the position of you know i often recommend not having a lot of projects in front of you and i was actually in that moment where i was like okay well what do i feel like working on today as far as this video is concerned and i really didn't feel like doing the gundam because again i still had more sanding to do and i didn't really want to you know film two hours of sanding again so what was I going to do? And I was thinking, well, I could work on, you know, this uh, creature caster bit I had going on, you know, this thing here. This is for the uh, Lady of Chaos that I've been working on for a while. And now the phone's ringing again. And, you know, I just, there was a bunch of other projects. I mean, I still have my corpse grinders to finish off. And, you know, because Ash and I will be getting together for that soon enough. So I had a bunch of projects. And I was like, well, what am I going to work on? So today, I am going to work on uh, this Tamiya M41 135 scale kit. Uh, I was talking about this recently in a video about, you know, basically taking a departure from, uh, you know, uh, other projects and such. And so this, we are going to work on today. We actually might get most of this assembly done. Uh, it all depends really on anything that I figure should be primed beforehand and everything like that. But yeah, so I was actually, um, I'm actually very excited to get this uh, project underway. Uh, I think I might actually do this as a diorama. So uh, I might put together a base for it and, you know, kind of create a little, little bit of scenery as it were for this. So yeah. Kind of excited. So, we are going to get started. And we're just going to toss that all over the place. We've got the bits for the turret, the body, or the hull. We've got our instructions. It's a nice big kit. It's pretty big. This actually should go together pretty darn fast. Because it's not terribly complex. I was totally expecting it to... Why does it have positive and negatives in it? So you can motorize this up. <laughs> why? Why? Does anybody know why? Why? Anybody who's assembled this kit before. So we've got other bits here. The uh, figures. See, I'm, the other thing is, is that it comes with these figures. Here, let's let's tear into these. It's got these figures that come with it, and I am I'm thinking of painting them kind of in the same similar fashion we do with miniatures and so that will be one of the things we do as we continue our way around this kit but yeah so it's 135 they're pretty darn big scale models they're not like 28 mil you know what I mean like here's a corpse grinder just to give you an idea how big these dudes are but it'd be kind of fun to paint these up kind of in a similar fashion to how we paint up you know miniatures and such well they even have little stands uh ever cute because this guy's depicted being inside the turret and so i'll probably paint him separate and then just slap him into the turret and this kit i'm i'm actually very excited to do because um you know it's, i haven't done a scale model and so darn long so i'm really kind of looking forward to this we're gonna keep those transfers in that baggie just to protect them from any kind of moisture we'll leave the tracks in here i like the other thing i like too is the tracks are rubber tamia does this kind of rubbery plastic and i like that and it's one continuous thing and look at it, they even lock up they just kind of just tab over and then chunk, and you got this little string of tracks i like that I like Tamiya kits. They're fun. All right. So let's get to 
all my wheels, all the other little bits. Got all sorts of little details. Yeah, this is going to be fun. We're going to have fun. And that is the whole point, right? Is to have fun. So I'm just going to set this aside. Let's grab our instructions. I always adhere to the instructions. And this is all in Japanese. Of course, because it's Tamiya, right? But there are English, I believe. Ugh. Let's see here. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, there's, there's, there's even warnings inside the box. It says, important information concerning this kit. Read carefully and fully understand the manufacturer's instructions. Book supplied with this kit. Care should be taken when using tools and modeling knives, as these can cause personal injury. So that's always something to be careful of. Keep out of reach of children under 36 months old. As some parts are detachable, children may not be allowed to... Um, what? As some of the parts of children must not be allowed to suck any metal or wire included with this kit. Wow. Yeah, I guess. I guess maybe if this was supplied with a motor, maybe? Oh, it's grabbing the instructions. <laughs> so what am I doing here? There we go. We grab the English instructions. Oh, it even gives us a little history lesson on the uh, on the tank as well. Oh, how very how very uh, considerate of them. Cool. All right, let's continue on here. Oh, we even got a nice little thing on applying decals transfers as it were do, 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 do. man we got a whole history lesson on this tank in here pretty wild pretty pretty wild okay so you know what i'm gonna get this out of my way because we don't really need it in our way not sure exactly where i'm gonna put it but oh construction of the lower hull let's find b8 sounds like we're playing bingo now b8 oh excuse me do, 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 do. Mm. so i'm not too concerned with these parts quite yet so we can set those aside as we're concerning ourselves with the lower hull. And I'm just going to try and make myself some room here so I know what the hell I'm doing. So I'm going to clear off B8. Yeah, oh, there's a few, there's a bunch of little, bunch of little parts here. So we're just going to get these little parts ready to go. And my boy keeps rolling on me. <clears throat> that nub looks deliberate. So, which means we have to just clear off that little nub, but there's a little nub on the plate here. It's probably. Uh, yeah, it looks like at this face, the, no, the there's a tab that kind of comes forward here, and it looks like that should face a forward, like so. Yeah, these aren't fitting together very well at the moment because there's little plastic nubs that got to get cleared off. But I do believe that is the way it's supposed to go together. And so we shall endeavor to clear these nubs off. When I was a young lad, I used to always do model kits. Started off doing World War II. I, I mean, I was a 
young kid and I had no clue as to you know how to do these things and and of course I was a big sci-fi fan so I used to do uh, Star Trek kits and stuff like that and somehow my cables are not level <laughs> so yeah that fits together right perfectly perfect we'll leave that for the moment doesn't connect all the way down. Oh, because it should fit right in that tab. Oh, there's kind of a locking thing going on here. Ooh. Oh, I see. Because these little nubs that are in there lock it into place. Okay. We are going to have to pay, pay attention to that. I'm not surprised. Tamiya kits often are you know well designed like a lot of thought really goes into these kits now i just want to make sure that this tab hold on i'm gonna make this so i can use this properly here fold over the fold lines there we go there we go Yeah, so the tab faces forward. Okay. We'll keep this off over here. A10. Well, this is B sprue, so we don't need that. What sprue is this? And this is Z sprue. This is A sprue. So we're looking for A10. A11. I don't see A10 and A11. Oh shit, they're right there. <laughs> Alright. Oftentimes you'll see I don't click right next to the bit as I'm pulling it from the from the sprue. I was cut just away. Just to avoid um, you know pinching the plastic at the detail. <clears throat> Just one of my things I do. Sip of coffee. Ah. What's the other bits? B. B17. Little hooks go into the front. Yeah, see, everything's all slotted. Oh, these little guys go right in the back here. Uh, okay. They plug in. Interesting. These kids, man, they're so cool. If you've not played with a Tamiya kit or a Bandai kit, they're so darn good. The details are so crisp. I have no idea when this kit was made. I didn't look on the, the date or anything like that, but I'm just shaving off of the excess nub. I could take a sanding stick to that and just to make sure that's perfectly flat. I'm not too sure if any of these details I'm really concerned about like mold lines. I probably should considering that I'm probably gonna do this, um, you know, in a realistic fashion with weathering and you know what I mean and you know what have you. And I'm thinking about doing it in like a diorama, so probably a little bit of realism there. So I may take that extra time and do that to the kit but like these wheel details I don't really think now the question was which one was which <laughs> I think they're key to specific way yeah they're key to specific way because it looks like the axle comes back like so yeah I think they're key to specific way And the hull. See, I see like little mold lines here and here. Probably knock those down. And like, it looks like this thing was attached to a sprue at one point, but like some details, I'm not sure if they should be knocked down or not. 
like there's some of these little overhangs yeah that probably should get knocked down and these little bits looks like where things plug into yeah we better take care of those some of these corners down a bit yeah because there's like a seam line that runs along here and it, yeah it's kind of this way This is the bottom of the tank. I'm not sure that this is going to be able to be seen. I don't know. Unless I unless I model the tank flipped over or something like that. It's a little dark over here. Let's move this light a bit. Let's get a little bit more light happening here. Yeah. There we go. That's all right. line running right here oh let's take it down yeah I'm not convinced that that's detrimental to our project here where's my standard Sander's a little dirty from the last thing I was doing. <sighs> Setting up dust everywhere now. It's getting smoky. <laughs> so right across here there take that right down yeah I don't think we're too concerned about that I'll be able to see more of the um, mold lines and such when I uh, get some primer on this. Trusty rust, trusty rusty toothbrushes. Always super handy. Just for, you know, getting excess material and dust and such off the off the kit. Alright. So that is that. This part here looks like it just plugs right in. So tab forward. Yeah, you hear that clicking in? Yeah. Don't even need any glue. I can probably hit that with some glass. Ah, screw it. Let's hit it with some glue. Because once the top part comes in, we're not going to be able to access it again, right? So we'll just hit it with a little bit of glue right there.
this all the way down. Nope, now it is. There we go. Yeah, plugged in now. Doesn't feel quite. Something doesn't feel right. It's not sitting properly. Something with that surface. Yeah, I'm not sure why that doesn't seem to want to sit right in there properly. Hmm. This one side doesn't want to sit right. Weird. It sits pretty flush to the top. Shave that little bit down. Still a little gap inside here, but everything seems to be okay. <clears throat> It'll probably come back to haunt me after I put the uh, the top part of the hull back on or something. Probably something screw me over like that. Just a little bit of glue there. Let's do those back wheels. So these are keyed. Boys like that. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So let's do that. Just like so. Normally, too, I would also score parts when assembling styrene plastic. Not too worried about that. What was the other two things? B17. Let's find ourselves some B17s. Let's go front hooks. There's four of them, so we're going to be using them elsewhere, I guess. Oh, the back portion. Cool. Okay. Let's pop that one. Pop that one. Some extra little nibs on there. lines, old lines. Just a simple bleeding I think is enough.
one. That's one hook. sitting here. Man, I really need to get some sort of music going. Because uh, working in silence is kind of the pits. <laughs> All right, so now obviously the hooks should face upwards, and they just slam right into those two spots right there. So let's grab your little bit of glue. Well, probably not a little bit, but quite a bit, really. That's probably too much. There we go. Two little hooks. Secure that. That is step one. Step two, fixing the wheels. We're gonna fix wheels, people. We're fixing wheels. Oh. Have a candle going here, I better douse it. Quite a few wheels. I guess we'll tackle the wheels first. Oh wow, it recommends allowing the wheels to turn freely. All right, so let's just pick a set of wheels and have at her. A1, A2, and P1. P1 is a little, where's it? So there's little pieces right here, right? Yeah, P. P for the squishy sort of plastic. Because it says fixing the, of wheels. Install wheels and various parts to lower hull. Allow idler wheels, road wheels, and drive sprockets to revolve freely. Fit polyethylene caps in wheels and cement halves together and then push wheels in shafts. 
pushy in the shaft. Anyway, <laughs> enough traveler's jokes. Okay, seems pretty straightforward. B23. It's all light. Oh, okay. It recommends putting a little red gloss on those little things. We'll do that when we get to the painting phase. See, I'm thinking that um, I'm probably going to end up putting the bottom half together, putting the top halves, and I think keeping it separate for that for most part. I think. That's the way I'm thinking this is going to go. I'm trying to I'm trying to plot ahead as far as how I want to go about, you know, painting this as well, right? Stuff you kind of have to consider when assembling kits. So that's A1, A2, right? And a P1. A P1. P1. What's the difference between P1 and P2? I guess those are twos. Because they got a little bit more depth to them, I guess. P2 goes to the drive shaft. There's only two of them. They recommend paint the wheels black, matte black. Shows it more on the rims. But P1 is the shorter ones. Okay. So let's clip one of these little buggers free. It's kind of fun clipping these soft little plastic things. They're squishy. Let's clear the nubs off these guys. Such clear shapes on these kits. It's been a while since I've done a Tamiya kit, but I know that the, the Bandai kit, like it's just, their casting process is just so darn good. All right, so that is the outer portion, portion, portion. So, I guess it goes like that. I guess that makes the most sense. And this fits inside. And that goes, ah, oh, okay. Eh, eh, makes a lot of sense. So then just those two halves have to get glued. Now, these, I will give a little bit of scoring to. Just for maximum adherence. Knock those little hairs off. It is kind of interesting though that it shows like painting these things before they get assembled in. It's, it fits all inside, right? Yeah. It's a bit light to score. Just for a little bit of tooth.
There we go. It's one wheel. 100 more to go. No, I'm just kidding. That should have been fixed there. Nope, that goes back here. Ah, okay. I can feel how it plugs in. Well, I guess I can slap it on because these don't get glued. Because these are designed to turn freely. Ah, look at that. It turns freely. The little rubber part acts like a little bearing inside there almost. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. All right, let's take carry on. So let's do the next back wheel, which is the A1, A2, right? Because the numbers are duplicated on both sides of the sprue. Oh, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four. This is one, two, it's the back wheel. Okay. Yeah, we'll do the next back wheel. <coughs> P1, right? Drop it the part. So there's another piece. Residual nubs. While I'm at it, we'll clear off this section here. Take it away with the scoring. It's going to have connect up nicely. Just a light little scratching I'm doing. Just so that they sit together nicely and adhere. <clears throat> Would be kind of hilarious if they broke apart at some point. It shouldn't, because I think we're going to do this as a diorama. Of course, the first thought I have of doing this as a diorama is kind of like um, the scene in Fury, if you've watched that one, where the, you know they're kind of in a desperate situation and they're surrounded and you know all that other typical kind of heroicness. Perfect. Man, you guys are quiet today. Let's slap this in. All right. Yeah, right away. <laughs> Make sure the hubcaps are facing on the outside. There we go. Oop. Push that little hook. Applying too much force here. Oh, that feels loose. careful because it takes a while for plastic cement to set it almost makes more sense to you know let things sit for a while before you know moving on to other things Gr grim fury was a fun movie it was a fun movie had some pretty gruesome parts in it but it was fun all right 
right here. There's a tiny other little note that goes on top of there. Shows it like there should be A6, A5, A6, A5. Slap them together and put them up on the top. probably shouldn't glue it so should we just glue these two halves together and then slap it in doesn't show a little gasket going on it though just the big wheels get gaskets there are three spots one two three Oh, okay, I see. It's one, two, three, yeah, so six. See, it's always good to plan these kind of things out <laughs> when you're looking at this stuff, because it's like, um, this, uh, the instructions telling me one thing, and I'm counting the parts, and there's, you know, so it's always good to make sure you read and thoroughly understand what's going on in your instructions. See, the instructions show all the wheels being assembled, but it only tells you exactly which parts are where, and it assumes you have the cognitive ability to um, assemble the rest yourself. Just basically repeat the instruction, right? So five and six just simply get put together. Let's just put one together. Let's see how that goes for us. Took these extra little nubs out of. And the instructions recommend not gluing any of the wheels in place because we want them to turn freely. IP freely. Shows like like going together like that. Oh right, because it's gotta have that track guide. Oh okay. So we should be able to just glue that in. All right? Glue it said the instruction said glue the two halves together. We're gonna glue the two halves together. Watch out now. We'll let that sit for a bit. You know what, let's go through and do all of P, or not P, A5, A6. So let's go for all the all the parts. We'll do all these little guide ones. So does anybody know how I can have some music going where I don't get copyright strikes? Does anybody know? Anybody? I'm putting this out there. Does anybody know? How do I do it? Now I know within Streamlabs there's a function, but I don't use Streamlabs because I am not on a Windows machine. I'm on a Mac OS machine. Ooh. 
<laughs> this is all really taking me back <laughs> to when I was a much younger lad building my kits. You know, it's also another fun sound when you're sitting here cleaning up these sprues and you got little bits of plastic going flying everywhere but when you come in and you vacuum the area and you hear all the little going up into the vacuum that's always fun too because <laughs> it feels like your vacuum is doing its job What are you talking about? Oh, man, this is... I kind of missed this. Just... Working on a project just for the sake of working on a project. So there's a big seam line around this one here. I'm just kind of knocking it down. You know, especially for a lot of you war gamers out there, and you're just kind of like, oh, I'm sick of looking at these models. There's just so many to do. It's fun. I thought somebody was in my backyard. <laughs> it's fun to just put a kit like this together just you know and this was only a couple bucks at, at a big box store <clears throat> and it's you know it's it's kind of it's kind of like like hobby therapy is really what it's what it is right it's hobby therapy just kind of just you know just working on a kit you know it has really no significance other than to you right to the point I'm trying to clean. oh shit where'd it go <laughs> no idea where it went as Chris spends the next 10 minutes looking for a little wheel aha found it that's not it <laughs> no that's it I got it <laughs> pick up an old Cheeto or something on my carpet Yeah, I'm almost tempted to paint these wheels up actually before, you know, painting them. Or painting them up before painting them. Painting them up before assembling them. Like assembling them onto the tank. I'm toying with the idea. You know what? I was thinking, you know what, for this kit, maybe I should pick up some Tamiya color. Just go full Tammy on this kit, right? Tammy a kit, Tammy a glues, Tammy a paints. What do you guys think? Should I just go full Tammy? Just go full freaking. I don't know what the word I'm looking for here. What would be the word for that? Going full. I have no idea. <laughs> right? Because nobody bats an eye. When you're assembling space marines and you're using citadel glue you're using citadel clippers you're using you know citadel paints right so why wouldn't i assemble a tamiya kit using tamiya glue using tamiya tools using tamiya um paints Wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. See, I gotta make up my own music. See, that always happens with these videos, is that 
because I don't have any music going, I end up starts singing goofy tunes. And I'm sure for some of you, that's probably annoying. <laughs> Grim, doing that would make sense. Would it make sense? I suppose, right? Because I could just as easily paint this with, you know, regular acrylics. I do have a few Tamiya paints, but I only bo really bother with the clear Tamiya paints. Because they're so fun. I like clear paints. They're just a fun way to paint. And... Yeah. Because I think with this tank, what we're going to do like for some weathering and stuff is we're going to we're going to do some some kind of traditional modeling techniques on it so i'm going to go about this thing in a pretty typical kind of fashion when we get to the the paint phase Wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round and round. <sighs> well, my razor one time, I was working on my station. My razor rolled off my desk and landed right in my lap. <laughs> It jabbed me a little bit. It wasn't like a full-on impaling or anything, but but it did jab me. So I'm always really leery of when my when my exacto is rolling around. <laughs> Grim, I'm humming along to whatever you start singing for now. For some reason, <laughs> I know, and I and the thing is, is like usually, you know, like I know a lot, like a lot of people talk about. Um, you know what they do when they're hobbying and stuff like that like some people listen to music some people have a podcast going um you know various things right personally i can't have movies tv shows or um podcasts or anything like that running in the background because i end up paying too much attention to that rather than concentrating on my project and you know with music it's kind of it's in the subconscious just freeing the brain up especially when doing like little tasks like this and modeling and modeling always has tiny little tasks like this like little repetitive things where you just got to do a bunch of them to uh, fit to uh, your uh, project and yeah I often need music I listen to music when I'm painting when I'm you know when I'm working on my canvases or you know music to me is very important I don't listen to a lot of podcasts when I'm hobbying because again like I said it's too distracting even when I'm like working on like say um, like I'm editing the videos like when you know editing you know fresh tips or whatever and you know I have music going most of the time unless of course I have voiceover in which like, I gotta hear it right and then you know I gotta carry on but um, yeah I don't I don't have those kinds of things going on because I prefer to have most of my concentration on the task at hand rather than you know having some YouTube video running or some podcast or you know whatever you know alright that's a bunch of little wheels there because they all plug into these little sections here these little guys what are these parts called on a tank I don't even know what these little wheels are called they're on the upper portion I said they were track guides but because I don't think that power is actually driven to these, right? Like on a tank, it's only on these wheels that are a part of the drivetrain. The rest of them all just, you know, guide the track, right? I'm sure some bunch of you tank heads out there probably are sitting there typing away. No, you idiot, it's this. <laughs> A4 and A3. We got a whole bunch of those all over the sprue. 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4. 
Right, because there's five. Yeah, so we're going to do all five. So, again. Whoa, see? Blade. Rolling. Rolling blade. Ooh, that sounds like a, a, a gaming handle. Rolling blade. I might have to, I might have to go in for that, maybe. Rolling blade. <laughs> He's big chief. Rolling blade. <laughs> and it's not racist, because I, I made the joke. Don't repeat that, kids. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You repeat it. It's funny. <laughs> Grim, I was looking up what those wheels are called, and it brought to the instruction page of the model, I think. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's such such clean casts on these things. Like I don't know how what the date is on this kit. It feels like it's an older kit, but I don't I don't think so. I didn't even look. Oh, I need a little thingamabobber in there. All right, I'm looking at the kit. Hold on. Hold on, kids. <laughs> on the front of the box, it says right there, modeling skills helpful if under 10 years of age. I was playing with this shit when I was, when I was, when I was about that age, so I didn't have any modeling skills. I was just, here you go, son. Put it together. Have at her. <laughs> If there's if there's a print date on this, it, it's in Japanese. So I, oh wait, there it is. Copyright 1975 Tamiya. 75. This kit's been floating around since 75. That's a year I was born. That can't be right. This kit has been floating around since 1975. Made in the Philippines. I refuse, refuse to believe that this is from 75. That this is because I mean, like this thing is in pristine condition. It was sink, it was shrink wrapped, everything like that. I picked it up at a big box store. So I mean, like, if it's at a big box store, I mean, like, there's distributors and shit for this, right? This, uh, sorry, it's just kind of blowing my mind that this kit is as old as I am. This is as old as I am. That's crazy. I'm my my brain is exploded. It's all over the place. It's a huge mess. My brain is just This was a mind bomb. My brain is I need an animation right now just for when my brain gets exploded. Anyway. Now these little gaskets I'm not too worried about clearing off the flash. Just slap it in and glue the wheel. Just like everything else. Just slap it in and glue the wheel. Simple enough. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do just that. I am going to score this little part though. Actually, it connects it on the outside. You know what? I'm going to score it just on the outside of the wheel or this little ridge here. Get a little bit of tooth into that surface. It's probably not entirely necessary because you know the, the glue does melt the plastic pretty easily, but I just like to have a little extra in there. And we will glue this right here. Gasket for you, son of a. Is it glued? I think it's glued. 
Sitra guy, pretty good. Okay. That's one. <laughs> and there I was worried about making a video today. That would have been just me sanding for two hours. And here I am assembling wheels. How long are we into this cast? Holy crap, it's already been an hour. I've been working on this kit for an hour already. And I'm still assembling goddamn wheels. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, grim I was so concentrated on not misspelling instruction that I forgot to put I forgot to put brought me <laughs> might be return roller return roller is that what we're calling it a return roller okay like I'm sure the anatomy of all tanks I'm, I'm sure that's probably the same and it's probably even the same for modern tanks that this configuration of wheels and everything like that and so a return roller all right, for this little part here, is that what we'll call it? We'll call it a return roller? Sure, we'll call it that. That's, that's, um, I can live with that. Until some other tank head tells me otherwise. And I know there's a bunch of you out there. Because this hobby attracts so many. Let me score this as well. Do, 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 do. Um, Grim, that kit has certainly stood the test of time. Yeah, the print date is seventy-five. That's still blowing my mind as we speak. I'm, you know, I can. I sound like a complete tool right now, but that's blowing my mind. This kit is as old as me, and like, like the plastic. Like the casting of this kit was so darn good like the edges are so crisp there's like not a lot of seam lines like on any of the parts like tamia has been making kick-ass model kits for ages apparently right like that's the conclusion you have to come to is they know what they are doing oh yeah you can see the little weld lines in the turret i don't know if you could see that but there's little weld lines that's freaking fantastic seeing the little weld lines honestly I'm, I'm not gonna lie it gave me a bit of a chubby <laughs> I love those kinds of details on kids where you can just you can feel the realism you can feel it it hits you right in the Just little scratches I'm putting into that surface. Just for something, just for a bit of tooth, like I said. Put that in there. The glue. Grab a fairly generous amount. Slap it in there. Slap it there. Which off. There we go. Another wheel down. Only, uh, you know, eight more to go. <laughs> uh, I love the wheels turn, though. Wheels on the bus go round and round, round and... I could probably slap these wheels on right now, too, but I'm not. I wonder why these don't get, get the little rubber thingies. They just kind of slap in there. Yeah, they just sit in there. Because once these are in place, they kind of keep these in line. Interesting. I may have to uh, paint these beforehand because that's going to be a complete pain in the ass uh, painting afterwards if I leave them attached. Now, it shouldn't be a problem pulling them off and, and painting them in place. Hmm. Yeah. I might have to go out and pick up some Tamiya colors. I, might, I just might have to. We might just go full nerd on this. I wonder if I even have the colors, actually. No, I I think most of my Tamias are all just the clears. Just the clears. Free and clear. Make that fit. Getting a little 
overzealous in my sprue clipping. Now, because these, it's recommending that these wheels turn freely, I'm wondering now, because like, you probably can't see it that well, but there's a positive and negative symbol there, and down here, positive and negative. That looks like for batteries, right? When you have alternating positive negative symbols, that typically means for battery housing. So like, was this kit sold at one point as an, like an RC kit? Is that why it has these openings down here? It's like for an on off switch. This was 75 when this was made, so I don't know. This is this is all tripping me out. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, it, it's I'm gonna be honest. I'm, it, it's freaking me out. <laughs> I'm freaked out. when I clipped it. Okay, I need a little plastic thingy. A rubber thingy. A gasket, as it were. Come on. There we go. Yeah, kids, I'm not going to lie. I'm having fun. <laughs> the only thing is, is I'm, I kind of wish I had some tunes going. That's the only thing. That's the only thing putting a dampener on my on my fun here. Do, 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 do. Ooh, that in there. Oh. 
Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's pretty exciting stuff, I know. Assembling wheels. That's a little rough right there. Let's clear this off. I probably could have sanded the entire edge of these wheels. For now, I'm not really worried about it. I think I'm definitely going to have to go pick up some Tamiya paints. Probably not going to shop around for these colors. You know what? Maybe we'll do it in a typical kind of, you know, fashion of what colors to use. I mean, like, because, like, I could paint this like a regular miniature with, like, acrylics and, you know, stuff like that. But I don't know. Something about using the Tamiya paints is kind of intriguing because... Tamias aren't like regular acrylics, they're more like an alcohol based acrylic. And they're actually very durable finishes. More akin to like a lacquer or a enamel, all right? Job is left nut. I've only tuned up to body shame the giant Gundam. I can hear you scratching the plastic, but you can't really hear what you're saying. Can't hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying anything. If you can hear the plastic, um, it's because I'm not talking. <laughs> Skeet. Boy, it keeps rolling around on me. Tim. I'm in deep thought at the moment because I'm trying to think if there's anybody around me who sells a lot of Tamiya, and I'm pretty sure there is. There's also a hobby shop in Niagara Falls, New York that I've been meaning to go visit because I need uh, some more Walthers. Uh, I had shown a video, well, Patreon members already got access to this video that I had done on doing uh, transfers. And I always yeah. use, where is it? I always use this stuff, Walther's. This stuff's fantastic. But you can see here how it's, right? The levels are right there. See it's sloshing around? I've got like next to none. So I need more. And if I'm gonna eventually get around to doing my Gundam, getting this thing prepared, I need some more decal, solve a set. I've never used Microsols, but I've been using Walther's, and I like Walther's. It just works fantastically. Fantastically? Fantastically. Oh, I'm going to have to clear off some of this. Some squishy bit there. Well, let's do that first. Pretty as a picture. Clear off that edge.
Job is loving that. That's better. I put on some headphones on. I can hear you now. Cool. You know what? Will this speed my workflow up if I just do this? Yeah. Just give it a quick sand. It gives it enough tooth right there. <clears throat> speed up my little workflow <laughs> of course I'm halfway done the wheels now so I'm kind of late coming to that realization <laughs> Dad, I'm not getting it. Do, 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 do. I'm kind of excited to start getting to actual painting on this. I mean, I'm having fun with this assembly. I know it's not terribly exciting viewing, but <clears throat> I'm having fun. been so long since I've done something like this. I honestly can't think of the last time that I just worked on something that was just for me. And I realize that I'm, you know, I'm filming this and I'm most likely going to be showing you guys my what I do with this. But I'm still considering it a project for me because it's you know there's no rhyme or reason to this, right? Like, as far as, you know, why I'm doing it. Just doing it for fun. Just doing it for kicks. And, uh, yeah, I'm thinking that uh, we're going to do a diorama with this. I've already got a few ideas on how I'm going to, like, compose it. So, yeah. I think I'm going to take a bit of inspiration from like Fury. Now I realize that Fury is, you know, World War II. Whereas this, I'm pretty sure this tank was post World War II. If I need one of the little gaskets here. <laughs> that might be too much. <sighs> do, 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 do. Just blowing on my wheels. <sighs> Don't mind me, boys. Just scrubbing my knees. Hour 20. I might be just done this, <laughs> the wheels here, once I'm, uh, it's all said and done here. Because once I get all these wheels assembled, there's a bunch of doodads that go in the front of the tank. Or in front of this lower hull section.
gasket. We're gasketing. That snapped in there with some force. Not the force. Just force. All these little plastic nubs everywhere. <laughs> Still awfully quiet. <clears throat> I mean, if nobody needs to talk, then you know, I can just work on my shit quietly, peacefully, without anybody disturbing me. Last wheel, well, last of these wheels, anyway. <laughs> I still have the two drive wheels here to do. I assume they're drive wheels, because they got teeth in them. I would assume these are the wheels that connect up to the, uh, the drive, right? Yeah, these are at the back of the tank, except the back. I'm assuming, though. I'm no tank expert. I just think they look cool. There's a shop locally that's not, well, it's, it's a town over, but they sell Tamiya. I'm pretty sure, well, they used to sell Tamiya. They sell Gundams and stuff, so they've got to sell Tamiya. black I already have a gloss red and whatever they recommend for the body I'm not that far yet as far as what the body would be painted but we are definitely going to do weathering on this I don't know if I've ever done weathering with these kinds of acrylics I 
I've only ever done weathering with water-based acrylics. <clears throat> I know like companies like AK and Ammo. Um, do all sorts of um, products and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Now for these drive wheels. I assume these are drive wheels. They got like the little spokes on them and everything like that. So it says A8, A7, and P2. A7, A8, P2. Look at that. It's got a hexagonal. Doesn't quite lock in like that. What does that mean? The bit is in the hexagonal. I am a confused. Why is that hexagonal? It's not hexagonal there. Oh, this is messing with me now. <laughs> anyway. Oh, look at this. Oh, we've hit our first little snag. Look at this. I don't know if you guys can see this. You know what? I'm going to zoom in a bit here. Hold on. Let me change focus. Um, is this camera? Yeah. No, wrong one. So, look at this son of a gun. I can't tell if I'm in focus or not. Frick. Yeah, see how the sprue connects up with that spoke. So I'm going to have to clear that spoke and reshape that for each wheel. Arg. All right. So. I'm gonna have to do that for every wheel. Frick. If I'd have known that, I'd have done these wheels first. <laughs> I'm cutting far away so as not to damage those spokes. How close can I get? Uh, it shouldn't be too bad. So there's a chain. Message from the wife. Uh, let's see. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad. If I cut it at an angle, then I can just shave the rest off. If I just go like that. Yeah, I should be fine. I was a little bit worried there, but it's really not too big an issue. Yeah. Provided I don't shave the uh, the spoke down too much. Yeah, it should be fine. Kind of annoying. But we're okay. So now... Yeah, we're fine. We're okay. No need to panic. I am going to get a seam line here. Seam lines everywhere. Come on. Yeah, there's a seam line that runs like through the middle, through every tooth. So I'm just cleaning off 
that seam line and cleaning off the teeth because I'm sure once the tracks are in place I'm, I'll notice it once we get to the painting I'll see it I'm sure But this is the nature of scale modeling. Going after these tiny ass little details. Keep hitting another area and it's like didn't i already clean this <laughs> am i like in groundhog day am i just going around the same areas twice like when am i going to hit the end of all these little spokes as you hit other areas you realize that you didn't do quite as good a job as you thought you did that's why this is always an exercise in in patience this kind of work which is probably why you know it's so hard for young people to pick this up I'd imagine because youth is rarely ever displays any real significant patience I myself included little nibs clear off the nubs okay there we go so that wheel is clear and I can't tell oh I can tell <laughs> I was gonna say I can't tell which one was the where the sprue sprue came through but yeah I can see it Pretty as a picture. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. I'm pleased with that. So this connects up to this, right? Yeah, because they're key they're keyed. You can see there's a little nub, little nub right in there, and so it's keyed, so it goes right like that, right? All right. Heel. So now we've got to clean this one and clean those spokes off. Again, like I said, it's not all oh, right because they got to clean both ends. Did I clean both ends? I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I don't even know what I did anymore. I've just been going about this for a while. Jabba's left nut. I've just finished a typhus model and his faceplate was attached to the sprue by the eye lens. I didn't realize because the eye lens was so small, I clipped it off. Now he's finished. It's so noticeable. Yep. You know, you gotta be, you gotta be mindful of those things. You know, when we're, we're doing these kind of kits, you just gotta take your time and really look at, you know, the details and pay attention. It looked like I was trying to cut myself, but I'm actually not. Here's a little spoke that was. There we go. Right? Right. There we go. Alright. Now this process of cleaning off the spokes. Gripping on both those spokes kind of hurts my fingers, <laughs> my sensitive fingers. Yeah, 
part you got to worry about when you're doing this kind of thing too is killing the detail, crushing them or slicing them off or shaving them down or anything like that. Especially on tiny little kits like this where, you know, they have, there's such fantastic detail on them. Lunchtime for this guy. It's actually past lunchtime, but because uh, I can feel it in my tummy, I need sustenance. That one went a lot faster. <laughs> I don't know why. It just felt faster. Jobs left out. That was the point I realized I needed glasses. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've been eyeballing up um, a set of magnifying um, headset, like, uh, you know, kind of fit on your head and has the little lenses in front. I've seen one on um, Amazon. I think I'm gonna pick it up it looks pretty big it's fully adjustable I need something big and adjustable because I got a big fat melon and so yeah I need something like that mm. yeah it should be fine <laughs> now this needs P2 which is this long long ass thing I should just fit right inside there perfect perfect it's all going to plan Double check, make sure I'm assembling this correctly. <laughs> I still don't know why that's a hexagonal pattern inside there. That's still tripping me out. Because it's nowhere else on there. All right. Last wheel. What is this bit? Well, I'm sure we'll figure it out later. Oh, better not lose that part. <laughs> so let's cut away from this, the bit. So we've got lots of room to work. <clears throat> the way this is designed, it goes right through that spoke. Keep that handy because it's got one part left in it. I'm at here, hour 40. Mm, let's cut this way. I'm just trying to cut this as close to the spoke as possible. The similar angle is the way it runs through one of the spokes, it's not like perfectly even where the spoke on both sides has plastic. It's kind of like one side of the spoke, so you can cut it along that that angle that it should just clear it. Yeah, keep 
guess I'll drop this one. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Perfect. Perfect. Now let's take down these little angles here. This is when you really need a nice sharp exacto blade for times like this on a model case. Oh, my dog is coming to see me now. What? Lay over there. <laughs> She's wagging her tail. Seriously, you can go right there. Sweet. Yeah, move my box. Feel free, feel free to move my boxes around. Yeah. I don't know why you're panting for. It's cold in here. You probably can hear her panting now. <laughs> why are you panting? Jess. Why are you panting? <laughs> she looks at me. Never mind why I'm panting, I just wait. My dog, pant. Just knocking down those little mold lines inside the spokes. This kind of thing is kind of like, you know, when you're doing like, um, like a space marine and you got like the plasma coils and you got that mold line sometimes that runs right through those little coils which is really super annoying. Kind of wish GW would figure out a way not to do that when they're casting these things. Because it's annoying. This kit is as old as I am, so can't really blame it. <laughs> hilarious part is is I'm thinking that I'm gonna see these details and so I have to clean these parts off but watch when I assemble this thing I don't even see them that would be my luck <sighs> oh. Get them at the right angle, I can knock it down like just a couple strokes. There we go. But then there is the satisfaction of you know cleaning the part properly. Tension to detail. And oftentimes with scale model kits, that's really what the big factor is, especially when you, um, I'd imagine like when they're being judged, that's what a lot of the judges are looking for, is prep work. I actually can't say because I've never entered a scale modeling competition. There are a few actually going on in the area here in the next few months. I might have to check them out. I just might have to. Oh, excuse me.
сколько сейчас времени это не знаю stuff out of her way. Freaking dog. Freaking nerve. She's in the corner. I don't know what she's doing. Jazz, what are you doing? <laughs> now she's leaving. She didn't want to answer my questions. It's like, hell with you. I'm leaving. Make me answer questions. I do as I please. I'm a dog. Sophie, wow. Didn't know you did Tamiya too, Chris. World War II tank. Tiger hat, perhaps? It is an M1. Uh, what is it? A Walker Bulldog. From Tamiya. But yeah. I'm doing a Tamiya kit. Um, I've done many videos where I've talked about, you know, diversionary type of kits, kind of like, you know, when you're, um, when you're dealing with burnout and what have you, right? Do something that's, you know, completely different. And so, not that I'm experiencing burnout at the moment or anything like that, but it's just, you know, something I've wanted to do for a while and so this little video series I do is that opportunity to you know explore these things and that's that's the only point to this to me doing this right now it's just for my own enjoyment as I'm poking myself with the little spokes on this wheel and going through the tedious part of knocking down these little mold lines and for anybody out there who has never done any kind of scale modeling kits I highly recommend it these are fun a lot of the skill sets um, in wargaming you know weathering stuff like that they're all the same they all come from this background this uh, scale modeling all the techniques the salt technique sponging chip paint all that that all comes from scale modeling been around since i was a kid <clears throat> Grab my little doodad, little gasket. I don't think it matters which way this goes. I don't think so. Really, Jess? You're gonna start cleaning our pog now? Do 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 do. Hands are starting to get a little bit shaky. I have to go eat. There we go. Bang. Another wheel down. Sophie. Oh, it's good to change from mini to do other model kits from time to time. Built a few Starship tank starships, tanks, planes before. Yeah. Yeah, before I was into wargaming, uh, I used to do Star Trek spaceships I used to love those there we go that's that wheel then I don't need this little bit left this spongy bit and this sprue has one part left on it so we'll put this away jazz 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 alrighty so 
all on these little bits. Because we don't really need to put the wheels on at the moment. Because I can actually probably just paint those right away. It recommends black on the rims, but it doesn't show like the whole wheel being painted black. Oh, I'm wondering because if you leave it this green, this this camo green color, olive green, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm sure all the scale modelers know what color this is. I'm sure there's a Tamiya paint that's probably this exact shade. But yeah, I think I'm actually going to go and grab some Tamiya colors and paint this in Tamiya's. That's what I'm thinking the plan is. So I'm probably going to pull these wheels off and paint and base all these parts once I get all these pieces assembled. Yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave these parts separate. Just glue some of these big pieces together. Any B6. six right there whatever the hell this part is <laughs> big slot right here in the front oops I'm knocking the wheels everywhere b6 I think there's any nubs there there's a nub there be careful this is where you want those really fine snippers. I'd love to get a set of those. What are they? God snippers or whatever the hell? I'd like to pick up a set of those. Freaking expensive though. It's like 80 bucks Canadian for, for a set of the snips. Trying not to kill any of these details on here. <laughs> I, almost, I almost got a little overly aggressive here and took out some of these little hinges. There we go. Almost. Almost. Almost messed up my whole kit. Just knocking down some of these corners here. I believe this little nub is a detail, but whatever. <laughs> All right. So that goes on like a that into that big slot. Let's score it up just a little bit here. Just so that the glue's got something to bite into. Yeah, let's just keep shaking at that. While we're at it. Okay. So it's that big slot. Just have to take a little bit of score just around the perimeter of that. Of. Let's give these a little bit of glue here. It goes into that. Just like. Ugh. Jabba's left nut. You should go to one. My father-in-law took me to one last year, the biggest in the UK. People came from all over the world to display the models. The thing was, I'm looking at them thinking there, there's the shading, the blending, and the edge highlighting. 
The father-in-law and his mate were viewing them completely different to me. Interesting. Uh, Sophie says, was that salute, Jake Jabba? Yeah, that was probably salute. I've heard of salute. It's a big, 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 big convention. As far as I understand, it's, it's like the biggest one in the UK. Well, that's what you just said, right? It's the biggest one in the UK? Yeah. Let's do those parts. What is that piece? B12. Where is B12? B12 is right there. That doesn't look like that part. B12. What the frick? B17. Okay, well, where the hell is B17? Oh, B-17 is those hooks again. <laughs> I was looking like, because I cut the parts out, and I was like, oh, wait, wait, the hell? B-17, I cut them out already. But B-12, that B-12. Oh, that's B-12. <laughs> I was looking at that part. I was like, that doesn't look like the picture. I'm looking at the wrong damn part. It's that part. What the hell is that part? How does that fit onto a tank? I don't even know what the hell that's supposed to be. You can see why, um, when they were making Star Wars, that they used all these part kits, these kits, um, like these little griblies, for making the starships and, you know, the details on things. Because, yeah, there's a bunch of them that's just like, what the frick is this detail? <laughs> What's going on here? I don't even know. I don't know. That's B12. We'll do this piece first. Uh, how do we clip this out? Oh, it seems pretty straightforward. Just clip it out like this. Let me clear this off. ourselves This looks like a toad shark. Is that what that is? I have no clue. I have no idea what this part. It'd be nice if the parts kind of had the name. Like, this is this part. Now, which angle is that going? Going like that, right? Yeah, it goes up like that. That makes sense. All right, let's glue it into place. Machine, I'm gonna hit that with just a spot more glue. It's too much. Right in there. There we go. Wait, it's upside down. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <coughs> we are at the two hour mark. Oh, I forgot about my coffee. Oh my god, it's freaking cold. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. So, we are going to call it there. I'm going to continue on, but I'm going to go have some lunch first. Because I'm hungry. I am hungry. I got a little plastic 
nibs everywhere. I'm going to put, I'm gonna have to vacuum up this week. <laughs> I can't remember last time I vacuumed in this room, actually. <laughs> so I'm going to end the video there. Uh, I know this is, wasn't terribly exciting, but hopefully by the next time we come around to this kit, we are working on some painting. There are some steps I've got to do before assembly. And also, if you have any ideas uh, on what I should be doing with this kit, uh, feel free to voice them down below if you're watching this on YouTube. And uh, yeah. Jobs left not. No, it was Scale Model World. It only focuses on that side. No wargaming. Ah, okay. Yeah, there's one going on in in the near future here um, in the bigger city, Toronto, here in Canada. And it's a scale modeling show or convention or whatever. But yeah, it's going on here. I may check it out. If I do, I'll probably bring my camera with me and maybe I'll take some videos and pics and stuff like that. But yeah. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Um, big thank you to all my patrons. Thought your support. These videos wouldn't be possible. If you're considering Patreon support, click the link in the description below. And, uh, you know, there are varying tiers to support at. Huge, huge thank you. Take care of your brushes, folks. Get a nice shot of my coffee here. Eh? Is there a bit floating around it? There's a freaking bit I was hanging on to it. Uh, look at there's a bit floating around. Uh, you can see a little bit. Son of a gun. <laughs> take care of your coffee, folks, because uh, your coffee will take care of you. And I will see you guys later. Later? Yeah, later. Maybe. I don't know. Sophie, enter your tank, Chris. Well, I, the competition's like soon. I don't know if this will be done by then. I don't even know when the competition was, but but yeah. But who knows? Anyway. Later, folks. Take care of your brushes. They'll take care of you. Maybe. If you're nice to them.